In this video, I'm going to talk about six mistakes that people make before they even push record. All of these things are things that I've learned over the years with experience. These apply to a lot of different types of things that you could film, but typically this is going to apply to corporate videos, commercials, videos for clients, videos for a local business. Here are some notes that I have that I've made with all the mistakes that people can make and things you can do to correct them. And I will be referencing this in this video. The first mistake that people make is they didn't think about location. They just showed up and they started filming. You should have a location scout shoot before you film. What I do is I grab my phone and I look at all the angles and I make sure to visit that location at the same time of day as I will be filming there. Unfortunately, this isn't always possible. So if we can, beforehand, we have the client or whoever is on site, send us as many photos as they can, just on their phone, they text it to us, they email us, and we look at the photos of the location beforehand. Unfortunately, this isn't always possible as well. Sometimes we can't even get photos of the location. Sometimes we're just showing up and filming at a new location without knowing anything about it. If that's the case, this is what we do. When we come to a new location, I make sure that we keep all of the equipment in the truck or the car and we keep things quiet. We walk into the new location, we introduce ourselves and we ask for a few minutes to look around so we can look at all the different possibilities of filming. I, I allow myself to have some time to think about each shot. A lot of times when we go into a corporate space, the person there will say, oh, we have a great place where we always film. Here you go. And they show you their conference room. And a lot of times these conference rooms are super boring looking and they have a whiteboard on the wall and they think that looks good. I always ask, do you have any other options? Can we look at any other spaces? Once we've looked at all the possibilities, then we, d then we pick the best one. At that point, after we've picked our shots and what we're going to do, then we bring in the equipment and we start going. The reason why I don't like to have people bringing in all the equipment from the very beginning is production is a machine that once it starts going, it's really hard to stop. It's a waste of time when you just start bringing in equipment and putting up lights if you don't have a plan. The second mistake that people make is they didn't think about hair and makeup and wardrobe. This is vital. It's just as important as lighting and sound and all the other things that we deal with. Before the shoot, it's very important for everyone that's going to be involved to be emailed and they need to be told that they should bring options. I really appreciate it when people bring multiple tops. They bring uh, different kinds of shirts, different colors. We let people know not to wear shirts with big logos on them. We tell people to avoid white because that doesn't look really good on camera. Usually we tell people to avoid distracting patterns. Sometimes in the email, when we're telling people what to wear, we give them sample photos. We want business casual with these kind of colors, keep it in this world. Another reason why I like them to bring multiple kind of uh, options is because depending on the color in the background, different colors work better. So if there's a lot of greenery in the background, I wouldn't want them to wear a green shirt because it would blend in too much. Something opposite on the spectrum normally looks good. So if somebody brings options, at least we'll have options for that. If we can't afford to have a makeup artist on set, we bring powder, we bring hairspray, we bring a comb, we bring a lint roller, bare necessities that we need to be able to control the situation and make people look better. A little bit of powder goes a long way. The last thing you want with your nice lighting is to have somebody with shiny skin. It really does not look good on camera. In the description of this video, you can check out links for the type of powder and makeup stuff that we like to use on set. In this category as well, another mistake that people make is they don't think about who they're filming beforehand. They set up for an interview shot and then the person that's being interviewed walks in and surprise, surprise, it's a bald dude. And you've spent a long time creating beautiful lighting with a with an awesome backlight. And now the his shiny head is reflective and it looks horrible. People with bald heads don't really need backlights. You need to know who you're going to be filming beforehand. If you don't have a photo of the person, you need to ask, uh, who, who is this person that we're filming next? How old are they? Uh, what do they look like? 
Uh, what is their skin tone like? You need to know how tall they are. All of these things will help you beforehand if you haven't met the person that you're going to film. Another important thing is a lot of women, they'll part their hair on one side and so their bangs will go over their face. And if your key light, your main light source is on this side of them, there will be a weird shadow on this side of their face. So whatever, whatever side is open, that's the side the key light should normally come from. So knowing what a woman looks like with her hair is important before you even start lighting the shot. Another mistake that people make before they start filming is they don't think about sound. Large cavernous spaces uh, will sound echoey. And if you're trying to film somebody talking, they'll sound echoey the whole video and it won't sound good. So one of the first things I do when I go into a location is I clap. And if it's an echoey location, then we try to do as much as we can to solve that problem or we don't film there. You need to stop and listen. Do you hear a loud air conditioning unit? Can that be turned off? Do you hear a refrigerator? Do you hear loud electronics? Are there intermittent noises that come and go once in a while? All of these things need to be considered when picking your location. Another mistake that beginners make is they didn't set client expectations. They need to know how long you're gonna be filming there as well. You need to let the client know, we will be here for about two hours, you know, whatever the time period is, because you could start filming and they could say, oh, I need you to leave now, we have something going on. And you'll say, well, we need four hours here. And they say, well, we thought you were gonna be here for 30 minutes. Everyone needs to be on the same page in terms of how long this is gonna take. If you're interviewing somebody, it's very important before you start filming to say, hey, we anticipate that this interview should take about 10 to 15 minutes, however long the time is. And then to set expectations further by saying things like, if I stop you while you're talking, uh, it's because I wanted you to say something in a different way. Um, if I ask you a question and you've already said the answer, it's okay if you say it twice. There are certain things that we need to say to people before we start filming so everyone is on the same page. Someone shouldn't be sitting down and then 20 minutes into the interview say, I thought this was gonna take one minute. Like, I didn't realize this would take so long. Another mistake that beginners make is they don't think about lighting consistency before they start filming. What I mean by that is, at certain times of the day, the lighting will be pretty consistent for hours and hours. The lighting coming through a window will stay relatively the same exposure. But in the morning or in the evening, the lighting is changing drastically. 10 to 15 minutes can completely change the look of your scene. When that's the case, you need to plan ahead of time and know, okay, this is a 45 minute interview that we're filming. We need the lighting to be consistent the whole time. The lighting's changing. Therefore, I'm going to control the exposure by either not showing the window and lighting the room accordingly or having a light coming through the window so the lighting will remain constant during the whole interview. I've made mistakes in the past where I've tried to film an interview and it's been like a 45 minute long interview and the lighting has changed from shot to shot. It was a partly cloudy day and the clouds were moving back and forth and the lighting was constantly changing. And so in the edit, when we're trying to put different parts of the interview together, uh, it took so much work that I've realized over the years that having consistent lighting through an interview will save you so much time and it's critically important. I've made this mistake too many times to count. Now, if it's going to be a quick two, three, five minute interview, maybe that doesn't matter. If, you're, if you know that you're just gonna use a couple sound bites from somebody, lighting consistency doesn't matter all that much. The key is to know how long you need to shoot in a certain location to control that light. Another mistake that beginners make is they don't think broader than just the one shot they're filming. They get so focused on what they're filming right now that they forget to step back and look at the big picture. What I always try to do is think about three things at one time. You can do this. Think about what you're filming right now. Think about the shot you did before this shot and think about what you're going to shoot next. By thinking about what you're doing now, thinking about what you did and thinking about what you're doing next, you can have a bigger picture of what you're doing. You're not gonna get hung up on the little things. Something that's happened to me in the past is we've gotten the perfect shot, we've, we've stopped the camera and then we've all sat there and then I've realized, shoot, I don't know what I'm gonna shoot next. Everyone's looking to me to know what we're gonna do next and I wasn't thinking about it. Always have in the back of your head, I'm gonna shoot this shot next and it's going to edit well with this for this reason. We already shot this and that will look good with this shot. A lot of times I'm thinking about the big picture and that's more important than each individual shot. 
Now with all of these things that I've told you, and there's so many more mistakes that people can make, experience is the key. Over years and years of filmmaking, you're going to learn so many different things, but you cannot learn if you don't take responsibility for mistakes that are made on set. I've noticed in my life that there's some people who always blame others. When something goes wrong on set, they always have an excuse. Oh, it, they did this and so they, that person wore weird clothes. That's, that's on them. No, if you're a director, if you're a filmmaker, if you're being paid for a job, everything that goes wrong with the shoot is your fault, your responsibility. And the reason why it's so important to look at things like this is because now you can learn. Now you can say, next time I'm going to do this to prevent that from happening. When you take responsibility for mistakes, you can learn and grow from them. And that's how your experience compounds and you get better as a filmmaker by taking responsibility for the mistakes that have happened. If you want to learn more about filmmaking, we have a lot of other videos that I don't want you to watch. Also, don't subscribe to our channel. Don't like this video. In fact, give this video a thumbs down. If there's anything I said that you like, don't comment about it. If there's anything minuscule that I said that you disagree with, write a mean, angry comment about that one thing. 